All right, so this is um, <clears throat> this is for test two A. This is uh, fall of twenty twenty two. All right, so I think I'm, I'll do this uh, like we did it last time. Um, I'll get this up so you can hear me a little better. <clears throat> So last time, the like the the first screen I go to is where I'll kind of talk about it. Then the second screen I'll go to for each problem is the answer. So if you're just trying to check your answers real quick, you don't want to listen to all the explanation. Just kind of fast forward to the second screen if you're watching the recording. Fast forward to the second screen each time. Okay. So. Um, this is another circular motion. Remember I told you that uh, on these uh, test A's that it'll come be very similar to the practice problem. So I guess you know then that the uh, gold standard would be uh, one of these two, either like the one from part one or this one, but they'll both involve circular motion. So I already took the liberty of doing a little drawing there. And that's, I, I think too many of you blow past the drawing. Like you don't think that's important. Like, I don't know what we, we taught you wrong in American school system, you know, that, that it's all about throwing the equation at it. No, uh, first you have to understand the, the question. All right. So that's why you need to do the drawing and take your time and label it. It, it will pay off benefits. So then we go to symbol thoughts, and, and I'm just trying to get you to think through how this is how you attack any kind of physics, any comp, complex physics problem. You have to kind of go through these motions. All right, so you draw a little drawing, then you put your symbol thoughts out there. So you write down the equations, you know it involves circular motion. So what I would do, uh, I'm going to show you what I really did here in a second, but what I would do is... I just, I, for simple thoughts, I'm just going to write down V is equal to omega R. I'm just going to write down some formulas that I know. Omega equals delta theta uh, over T, okay? So those involve, I mean, if, if you added this one too, if you said uh, delta S equals omega RT, the big bridge, I wouldn't count off for that when I'm grading it. You're just trying to throw all, these are your symbol thoughts. I want to see you think. That's my job is to watch you think. And uh, so I know where you're having your issues. Anyway, so I, I realize when I write that out, okay, I don't really need that one. I'm, but what I'm given, and what you should be doing as well is circling what you're given. So I'm given uh, a delta theta. I'm given an R, that's because the, when the thing, when the door shuts, that's the radius. I'm given the velocity, that's tangential velocity. Sorry about those units going to the next line. I hate it when that happens. And I'm supposed to find time, milliseconds. Okay. So it looks like these two equations will do it for me. I just got to get those so I rearrange them so I solve for T, okay? Uh, I'm going to erase that so I got a little more work, got a little more room here. And so let me blow this up. I'm sorry. Uh, get a, just get on. If you can't, if you can't understand me or you can't see what I'm doing, you got to make sure you either with your mic, you tell me or you comment. All right. So ultimately, I'm trying to find time. It looks like if I do this, if I say, and that is VT, that's that's tangential velocity. Turns out different kinds of velocities. So that's a tangential velocity because it's going around. The door is going, you know, that's the speed of the outside of the door. Okay. So VT, is, I'm going to substitute in for omega, delta theta over T. And so then I have that times R. And this is all the stuff I'm given. I was given delta theta. I was given R. I was given the, how fast it was going. So now I know what I need to find is T. So for this, I need to get T by itself. So multiply both sides by T. This is confusing because there's a subscript T there. I'm sorry. Sometimes you make that a capital T. So we don't get them mixed up. So uh, multiply both sides by T and then divide both sides by VT and I'll have T equals 
delta theta times r over vt, vt being tangential velocity. Questions, questions on that? Because that's really, you know, that's about, that's about 70% of the problem right there. Well, let's say at least 50%. So then we go, because if you get that wrong, you know, on these, on these unit analysis, I mean, you could be really great at doing the conversions, but if this, if, if your mistake occurs upstream, you're doomed, right? I mean, the whole thing's doomed. So don't blow past these crucial steps. All right. Anyway, so that's Delta Theta. This is where you make your mistakes. I know I've graded these things enough. And so I put a Delta Theta there. Oh, sorry. I think I made a call. No, I didn't. No, that's right. It's okay. So I put a Delta Theta there. If I said it was coefficient, I don't know why I said that, except that Delta Theta has no units, but kind of a stretch to call it a coefficient. One over VT. Okay. One over VT. All right. So I bet if this thing's worth, it's worth eight points here, but if it's worth 40 points or what, maybe 30 points on Friday, that you've gotten yourself 15 already, at least maybe 18. Now I plug in my, it's very important to plug the numbers in uh, correctly. Take your time. Pi over three. That's my radians, my delta theta. R is, it said, 36 inches. And, and write them, don't try and make conversions. Right, this has to be givens. I'm going to start taking off for doing conversions in the given. This is the given section. Anyway. I'm not, usually I'm not this much of a, you know, a stickler on this, except that I know this works. Okay, this is 1,200 on bottom. But once again, you make your mistakes. You don't flip the units, centimeters under seconds, right? Because I flip the number, I got to flip the units. Okay, when I work with students, that's a big part of their problem. Now, if this were worth 40 points, let's say, you probably already got 30 of those 40. Now, the rest is just good old conversions. I want to end up in milliseconds, MS. So uh, I'd like to be calling on you guys. And when we, when, when I did uh, this, the year, I have every, every class we do, I have it on YouTube. It's all on YouTube. You can find everything we do because I did it during COVID. We, we met every day. I had about 12 students, good students, you know, Io's in there, and Sophia's in there, and a bunch of people, really top notch. And so it was a good class. It was, a, and we were, but we did it, we did it like like we're doing this here. But every lesson is taught this way. So if you ever need to go back, you have to go find it. But it would have the date on the title and all. Anyway, look back to twenty twenty. Okay, so when, when we did that though, I had them participate more because that was like a class. This is just a night session. So I'm just kind of lecturing. I hate that, but. Anyway, we only got 45 minutes. Now we do the conversions. I'm training up in milliseconds. So what I do is I, I go for it right off the bat. Milliseconds, uh, sec, uh, sorry, 1,000 milliseconds. And you can do it any order you want, but uh, I want to do it this way because so I don't, so I, so I feel, okay, I'll show you why. 1,000 milliseconds over seconds now i'm going to kill the seconds my green kill pin i'm going to kill those seconds i'm going to save the milliseconds and now i'm done thinking about that now all i got to do now is kill 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 i gotta i could kill everything all right kill every unit now i know my i've saved my milliseconds now let me kill everything so uh, i don't know what that says about me but i i, I that's kind of how my mind works uh, you know, go through and it's just categorize. This is okay. Now it's a save. Now it's kill. All right. So centimeters, I got to use the conversions I gave you. I'm okay. If, if you said 2.54 centimeters equals an inch, I'm okay with that because that's kind of common. Anyway, I'll go with what it said here. So 
that's 100 centimeters over a meter and then 0 0.305 meters in a foot. And then, oh, inches, 12 inches in a foot. Uh, let me bring out the green kill pin. Uh, boom, just to see where I'm at. It's a kill festival. Feet, feet, hey, it's Halloween, right? Uh, scary. So there it is. Everything's Everything now is um, Halloween kind of dead. And uh, we're left with just the numbers. So I would personally, if that's worth 40 points, you got yourself 30, probably seven at least out of 40. And if you want it, but then it's just not there. The bang for your buck in time now is not very good because now you're going to spend a good, you know, two, three minutes trying to go for three points. And then you leave a 30 point problem unattended. See what I mean? That's that's not smart use of your time. Anyway, so what I would do, maybe, maybe what I do is I, I don't want to get my calculator out, but so I'm just going to go ahead and I, I know I can pull uh, a couple more points if I do this. And all I'm doing now is just copying, and I don't need the units anymore because I've already killed everything except milliseconds. And then three, 1,200. That's it. I'm, oh, no, times 12. Okay. And now you're going to get 39 out of 40 points. So if it's worth it to you to spend for one point, to spend forever punching into a calculator, and there's a, probably a decent chance you're, you hit the wrong button anyway. So I would leave it like that. I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> Who has the answer? Claudia says, is it okay if I write V without the subscript T? Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to count off um, if you don't call it tangential velocity. No, I'm not going to count off for that. That's fine. I don't think I even called it tangential velocity. I just said it's moving at that speed. So, no. Anybody got an answer on this? Oh, 79.8. Okay. Well, okay. Okay. I trust these guys. So 79.8 uh, milliseconds. So that door, that door slam, you, you got it. When you finish a physics problem, you need to go back and think about what does this mean? Don't just rotely throw down numbers. I hate that. Think about it. That means the door slams shut in about 80 milliseconds. A thousand and well, okay, a thousand and one is one second. That would be kind of a slow shut. But this is real. He slammed that door. Well, Nicholas was mad. All right. Uh, there is the, there's my, okay, there's my worked out answer. All right. Uh, oh, there's my worked out answer. <laughs> that's what we just did. We just did that. And then that's what I did earlier. So, boom. Okay. Now let's go to this. No one, not one person's asked me about. I know you just got the test recently, so I get it. But I'm wondering what your thoughts are. I mean, this is a okay. He, here's the story behind this problem. My wife and I go out walking at night. Well, she like we we got talking about the moon or something. I don't know what it was, but. I said to her, I said, you know, if I point to the moon, I said, it looks like it's not even moving. And she said, yeah, yeah. I said, if I, I mean, if I follow my finger, just like my finger just sits, just points. And she said, stop pointing because you're embarrassing me. I said, but it's really going like three times the speed of a bullet. Um, like mock, or take it back. Uh, three times speed of sound. Uh, bullets go at different speeds. but three times speed of sound, it's moving extremely fast. Why does it look like it's sitting still to me? And then she uh, told me to keep walking because it was getting late. Well, um, so that got me thinking, we should ask that question because it's basically, this is the same question as me pointing at a jet in the sky, right? But now you got to kind of explain. And I don't want to say too much, um, because I want to hear what you think, but let's at least draw a couple of things here. I mean, this is supposed to be a key as well. So uh, yeah, ultimately I have to kind of tell you the answer. But anyway, 
So that's 20, that's V. And once again, uh, Claudia, that is VT. It is tangential. Anytime something's going in a circle, it's tangential velocity. Uh, that's 2,300 uh, miles per hour. I mean, the reason I do that is, and I, I a lot of times make it lower, lowercase t or capital T, it's fine. But the reason I do that is so that somebody reading my equation, if, if they see a VT, they go, oh, there's circular motion going on. It's not, it, the, the, the object wasn't going linearly. It was going in a circle. At any given instant, it's going linearly. That's a whole other story. Um, which is blazing speed. Label the drawing below and use at least 60 words. So 60 words is like a decent paragraph. But in physics, when you're doing an essay question, and I really haven't given you one, you know, uh, I, might, I might throw this at you. I haven't quite finished writing it yet. So anyway, um, so when in physics, when you're given an essay question, not like English, where you have to give a thesis statement and all that, which is fine. That's good for English. But for physics, uh, you can get the, the words in and the labels. I'm OK with you just labeling everything really well. And then trying to maybe a couple of sentences explaining why or in the labels explain why. Anyway, so this is, uh, that's my change in theta. And if I do that over time, I have my omega. So my, my omega, the reason why omega is important is omega is your, omega is your perception of how fast something's going. Like, if I look at, think about my eyeball, when my eyeball, there's an omega, right? Because if I'm watching something moving from left to right, my eyeball scans that so that my brain, my eyeballs are actually part of my brain. The, the eyeballs, and I, this is from a, a neuroscientist, the eyeballs are part of the brain. They're just on the outside of the skull. So that they're directly telling that the omega of my eye turning it's sending that feedback to my brain and that tells me speed that that's, I interpret that as so I'm interpret, interpreting circular motion as linear motion. I'm, I'm interpreting that rotation of my eyes. And then from there thinking how fast that car is going. But the problem is that's my, that's my view of how fast the moon's going. I get from my eye or from my following my finger, which isn't hardly moving. So, that's the eyeball part. Okay, and then um, the moon. So then but here's the part I haven't brought up. I mean, the main part is the R, right? The R, because V equals omega R. Uh, now, I don't want to say too much more, but if omega is what my, my interpretation is omega, that's my view of the speed. So because my eye is rotating my view of the speed and then v is the actual speed the r is the factor right so there's an inverse relationship between how far away the object is be it the moon and what i think the velocity is the further away um, well, inverse relationship between what I think the velocity is. So as, as R goes down, omega goes up and vice versa. So the V, let's say the V is just happens to be whatever the speed's going, in this case, Mach 3. But it's all about how far away it is, okay? If the moon were closer, it seemed like it's moving a little faster, you know what I'm saying? Because you can see, like, you can look up and watch ISS come by sometimes, depending on time of year. And you can watch dot, dot, dot. And it's, you can actually almost follow it with your finger because it's not moving. It's moving at 17,400 miles an hour. But, um, but it's not, it's only 200 miles up. It's not, you know, way out there like the moon is. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? Thoughts? Here's what I here's what I wrote out this afternoon. If that if that's better, it's a little a little less random. But uh, and here I would need to add I would need to add v is equal to omega r. And then meh, okay, why not? Uh, and then I would add maybe omega is equal to v over r, right? To make the point 
that, you know, as R goes up, omega goes down. As V goes up, omega goes up. Got questions on this? Or have I talked your ear off? We got to keep moving, man. No beer till midnight. Anybody got a question? You can ask in class tomorrow. I'm cool with it. But put your thumbs up then. Thumbs up. We'll go keep going. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. So we get to 11. I don't need to spend much time on these, right? We've done these in class for more than I've ever in my life ever have taught. I taught you guys more than any other class. I don't know why, but I did. So uh, let's go to the answer. Boom. Um, yeah, I'm not going to waste your time doing something you already know. Uh, I will say that there definitely is one like this on the test, of course, because uh, we spent so much time on it. But I would uh, really know, like on the test, it's like, here's here's a nice heads up. It's like, um, I'll show you, huh? It's like, uh, let's go purple boxes. So there's like a box, box, box box okay so it's those four boxes so i just so when you see that don't like oh what do i do okay it's just filling in the parts of the uh interval okay i'm going to say we're ready to go on uh this one same idea only this time you have to do from one equation you got to get both graphs i am under the assumption you understand this but that's why I give you tests. I mean, I give you tests more for me than for you. I mean, yeah, you need to be, you know, I need to have a hammer sometimes and see if you really understand what's going on. But I got to know if I taught anything, if you learned anything. Sometimes it's extremely depressing to grade a set of tests. Sometimes it's uplifting. But, you know, I'm saying, I mean, it's just a, it's a beat down on my soul. Uh, because I have this vision that people understand what I'm talking about. And then I grade tests and I realize that I suck. So I have some victories, but over, there's a lot of overall suckage. So anyway, um, I really do. I look carefully at your test because it's like a reflection of me. No pressure. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how much of this I want to do. We, we've, we I'm going to keep moving, okay? We'll go to the answer. Uh, there you go. Oh, something a little new here. That is something a little new. Um, here, see, see that? That's I threw a little twist in there. X naught equals 75 centimeters in initial position, which doesn't affect the velocity. That's still zero for the first, because see, the, the action doesn't pick up till three milliseconds. Um, but up here, you start at 75. Well, the reason why I did that is I thought a student would come up to me and say, hey, look, Mr. Asky, you it goes off the graph, you know, which you would if you didn't start at 75. But nobody, you guess I, you haven't had enough time. You've only had a couple of days. I get it. So um, uh, so we start, at, we stay at 75 until uh, we get into this little negative 15 centimeters per second. And you have a little diffraction point there, and then he goes down. Okay, so that makes sense. But that's the only new part, sort of. Oh, questions. Uh, Rafa says, uh, oh, Rafa's back to the moon. I just didn't see it. I'm sorry. So, so the moon appears not to be moving because the distance and the speed of the object. Well, the speed of the moon is it's doing its part. Uh, I mean, you know, somebody flies by me at Mach 3. <laughs> I'm going to be impressed. Um, it's just that it got, it gets trumped by the distance. Somebody look up how far it is to the moon. It varies. Someone, the first person who would write that in the comments gets the stamp. How far away is the moon? It's, uh, so for some reason, my brain's not, not picking it up. Uh, a couple, couple of days away, three days away. There it is, two... 287, there's a Raffo, I'm guessing he's right. Uh, Raffo gets the uh, stamp. So depending on the time of, month, time of year, because uh, it, it has a super moon, a perigee, and an apogee. Uh, perigee is the closest it is to the Earth. The apogee is the furthest away. 
So anyway, that's probably an average. So about, you know, we can roughly say 300,000 miles away. So that R is so big in the denominator, back to this problem, it's so big in the denominator um, that, you know, even though the V is pretty big, Mach 3, R beats it at 300,000. Okay, that did seem kind of 240,000 uh, miles. Oh, are we talking kilometers or miles, Rafa? Maybe that's the problem. Uh, you being from Italy, I I don't trust you. I think you're giving. Okay, okay, no, you're right. Sorry, I thought I thought you do metrics, you know, because you're European. Uh, uh Shargo is also he's um, Bangladesh, so he does metrics. These guys are having to learn a whole other system just to <laughs> just to placate us idiot Americans. <laughs> Yeah, so 238,000 miles. The point is it's huge, which makes the denominator big and makes the fraction really small. And so remember, the omega comes back to how fast my arm's moving or my eyes, how fast my eyeballs are moving as it streaks across the sky. I mean, a meteorite, whoa, you know, because it's so close. It, maybe it's, you know, maybe by the time it's burning up, it's 20 miles above us as opposed to, 240,000 miles. All right. I've, I think you can get 60 words at all that. <laughs> did that, did that. Okay. Now we're on the last problem. All right. Wow. Oh, no, no, almost the last problem. Okay. There is, I just finished doing this problem on the test. It's similar. It's, it's still, it's a parabola. In fact, it'll look a lot like this one. Uh, but you, but when you do your, um, when you do your stegosaurus tail uh and here you have to do it by every every one second so and it's also six seconds on the test so you know like i say i'm, I'm you, you all are giving up your uh, wednesday night this is a huge deal i should reward that and so you'll get rewarded okay so first thing i do is make a stegosaurus i have the answer but let's go through some of this first thing i do is make a stegosaurus tail and i should get a ruler but we're okay on time. So I take a ruler. What I do is to just to keep myself honest, I come wherever it crosses that, we're doing it every second. Okay, I put a I put a horizontal line right there in the center of that. I guess it doesn't hurt you watching me do it. Um okay, you have it on tape. And I have uh help videos on this, quite a few of them actually. Um if this one doesn't float your boat. So now I want to color in. I want to color these in, but this is the last time I'll ever do this tutorial. Okay, so I'm coloring these in, and uh, I, I I feel my my blood pressure drop. Uh, look, hold it, hold it, hold it. Um, I want to. Uh, Check it. <laughs> okay. Do you see this? Let, let's take this one for instance. This is this is more of a curve. I I am so stupid uh, that I I took that the the trio we were doing now. I squeezed it to fit it in the page. But when you squeeze it like that, it makes it. That's why we had to go to the iPad to blow it up because it makes it impossible for you guys to. So the one of the tests is more like this, where it's not so squeezed. <laughs> Okay, because it really makes it hard to see your height. That's so dumb. So stupid. Okay, so these little, if I blow this up, notice that that, okay, the red is straight. And you see that slight curve in the black, right? So it depends on how, how flat the bowl is or, or your graph. But um, there's a noticeable difference. So just keep in mind, what I'm saying is you are representing that curve with a series of straight lines, pixelated, if you will. So like on the, on the next one, my points go from here to here. This is great. The great thing about this is you guys are being very patient. 
if you're watching the uh if you're watching the video you can just fast forward <laughs> okay so see my point um that that is a that is a straight line that is trying to represent a curve see that diffraction point right there between that straight line and that straight line okay okay fine we're not in grad school here let's just keep going uh but i think i think the cool parts about physics and math are the details i'm a devil when it comes to details that is from a movie we're gonna color this one in and then we'll, then we'll move on okay okay so uh we have our stegosaurus tail let's assume we did them all and then you find the slopes of each one well the delta you know it's rise over runs so let's do let's do these two yellow circles the yellow, yellow triangles so this is always going to be one not always but at least here uh it's going to be one purple one that's going to be one and then the height will change and you know what the height should change the same amount each time if if i'm if i'm if i and this is actually a manufactured parabola so it's not like we were rolling a ball down the ramp. And so we had real live data. So it's going to be hard to be the same. But this should give us pretty good uh, numbers. So keeping that in mind, um, that guy right there, what is our units here? Oh, you guys are talking? No, no. Okay, so that's everyone. It's five by fives by fives. Okay. So that is five, six, seven, would you say? I'm going to go seven on that, I guess. And I can adjust slightly later. I'm going to go seven on that. Ow. Um, uh, and then this one here, I'm going to go five. I don't know. Daggone it. Nine or 10, you know. So, so now you've established that between this and this, it's two. It's plus two, right? So I would be looking for plus two, plus two, plus two. I'm not saying dry lab it and cheat, but it should be plus two. Let's just take a quick look. This next one should be 11. So that's five to there. And then, and, 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 and there's definitely, that's 10. I, I can call that 11. 10 and a half, I'm gonna call it 11. See what I'm saying? So I'm not cheating. Uh, and then that should be five probably, right? Yeah, well, Eh, um it's not five I, I cannot lie that's six and then this guy's about oh no 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 uh five i saw i was off by a little bit that's not five that's should be five it's more like four at the most that's almost cheating and then this guy should be about two and that's that's about right so two four seven nine eleven okay so you'd say over here you put your slopes uh, two, four, seven, nine, eleven. Zero to one is two. Two, four, seven, nine, eleven. And the last one I'm guessing is thirteen, right? Uh, yeah, I could I could get thirteen out of that. Okay, so now you have those numbers, and we've just done this once or twice. We'll do it again tomorrow. But now you have those numbers, and now you're trying to think, well, what do I do with now? Now I got to plot these because I'm trying to see how the velocity is changing. This is worth a lot of points, I think. But we'll spend tomorrow, most of tomorrow on it. Okay. Okay. So uh, I have, a, and, I'll, and I will, I'll go ahead like this. I'll go ahead and label the, the axes. I'm not going to have to make, you have to make up a, you know, I'll label them. So the times, and unfortunately, I couldn't fit these in a trio, like, you know, basement for the acceleration, first floor, for velocity, second floor for because just the I couldn't fit it into the test uh, that way. It wasn't it was, the other problems were looking goofy. So anyway, um, so it, but this is the now the one below. So the times do match up. Okay, so zero to one, we're at two. What is going on? Okay. I don't need it. This is a small step. Zero to one, we're at two. Open circle. Uh, 
And then we go four. All right, then we go seven. Then we go nine, uh, eight, nine, ten. Well, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we go eleven, and then we go thirteen. That's nice. Kind of lines up nicely. And there you go. There's your steps. So um, remember, I said that you can collapse each step down to a dot. Because I don't, I don't, I want to get a best fit line through that. So, uh, and it makes sense. The dot goes in the center, but I'll show. I'm not going to spend a whole daggone period like I did last year. I'm going to, but I'm going to quickly show you probably next week. Yeah, next week why you can collapse it down to a dot. And there's help videos on that. It's one of those details I like. Okay, so um, let's do a sequence and tangents. And, and it has to do with calculus and algebra. So it's kind of a kind of a big deal. Anyway, so now we do, I mean, you could die and not know it and still be have a, live a good life. It's not like it's that, but. Okay, so now I need to connect my dots. Let's just redo that. No, yes. Okay, now I want to connect my dots. I want to do it. That's what stupid let's just blow it up okay that's why i bring in this stupid ruler it drives me crazy uh best fit line let's go black red 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 oh no there eh, pretty good i'm gonna kick, kick them up a little bit but i'm fine i would accept that certainly um okay so i'm not seeing any comments so i guess you're following okay now what do we do because this is new this is this is you know the last part of the test is always kind of the newest stuff here and it's the most actually 100 percent honest with you this is the most important problem on the test by far uh questions so far the next step is our ultimate goal to complete the trio to find out what the acceleration is okay that hidden acceleration that two derivatives beyond the observable okay so um oh i just uh do a rise of a run i don't want to go that small i don't want to go i don't want to go uh, that small uh so let's go over say i don't know i guess all the way to six go up and we are at at six over Let's find our slope here. It's six over. We are, according to mine, 14, 14.5. Uh, I can't be that. Yeah, I'll go 14.5. Uh, yeah, 14.5 divided by six. Uh, Florida says, why do we not connect the engines? Uh, I'll explain that one again. I don't get what you're saying. Uh, Shorter, say that again. While you're doing that, I'll figure this out. 14, and then we got one more problem, and we're done, baby. We may make it. 14.5 divided by 6. So about 2.4. So my acceleration here is with the line, though. I don't, it says, you, you asked, I don't, I don't know if you guys can see the um, questions. Uh, Shagar said, uh, why do we not connect the endings with the line? Uh, as in, why do we connect the dots to find the best fit? I didn't connect the dots. I didn't connect the dots. I, I use the dots to uh, get a best fit line. Uh, I think maybe what you're asking is a deeper question than what I'm thinking you're asking, but <laughs> you're looking at the difference between calculus and algebra. So we use the dots as a guide. Yeah, 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 yeah. The dots are your guide. I mean, it's hard to uh, look at a line and hit the middle. I can see, I can see green dots, you know, and try and get a line. It's hard to get a line through a line, and you're bisecting every. Nah, come on. So, but I'm not saying it's just a convenience. It's the it's the essence. It okay. <laughs> Since you asked, 
those steps, those purple steps are secants. Okay, those are secants. That's algebra. Alge secants are algebra, man. Secants are averages. Average means secant. Secant bad. Uh, secant uh, not give us what we want. We want instantaneous change. I want tangent. Tangent's the goal, not secant. Well, believe me now, oh no, hear me now, believe me next week, but the tangent always occurs if it's a parabola the tangent always occurs at the mid time of a segment so that would be the center so every one of those centers is where it's tangent is where it's instantaneous velocity newton used this trick uh to his pretty big advantage uh part of what makes him a genius anyway so now let's keep going. So we, I want to plot the slope of that. And it and it's 2.4. So ba bomb ba bomb ba bomb. 2.4, I'm done. Okay, I stopped talking and uh, we keep moving. Oh, there's my official answer. Let me kill that. That's my nice uh, taking my time. And I got 2.6 when I did that. So I wasn't rushing around as much. There's the official key. Okay, last one. Uh, this is one that I got. Uh, Marin sent me this one from uh, Princeton when he was at Princeton. Um, he thought it was a good. So this is how they're testing at Princeton. No, I'm not going to close. All right, so it says uh, five motion diagrams in which points represent the positions of an object at equal time intervals. So it's like a strobe light. So you're looking at something with a strobe light and you're watching a ball roll across the floor, but you got a strobe light on. So say it's uh, this little um, ball here in A, if, I'm, if that strobe light comes on every, uh, let's say millisecond, uh, a very fast ball, then I will see where the ball is at every millisecond. So I see that the ball is progressing left to right, but it's not speeding up. You see, the, um, the delta T is the same. So that, that is going at a constant rate. So that's a, that is just a, that's a situation where it's like a red equation, right? Uh, there's no acceleration at all. So it's just straight up uh, V. So that is just delta X equals VT. That's a red equation situation. Now on B, the notice that the ball you're doing a strobe light every one every millisecond and notice that the more the the you know the, the more you're looking at that ball not only is it moving right to left the, the delta the delta x is growing uh you know so it looks like i think it's the wrong that's the wrong line but yeah the delta x is growing uh so there there's acceleration involved so that would be a orange equation but that's there is acceleration all right so anyway ah, i got colors in my brain so i gotta do it right i'm not obsessive hey uh, and that would be orange so that's where you have an acceleration is constant and then uh for c it but now look at c c and b are kind of the same but in c I said, circle the letter of the object with the greatest magnitude of acceleration. Well, look at C, man. Uh, it's like gone. By the fourth millisecond, fifth millisecond, sixth, it is out of there. So that's got a bigger acceleration. That's got the biggest that's so far. Well, in D, it's, the velocity is changing, but it, it's getting smaller. So it's slowing down. So there, it's acceleration, but it's negative acceleration. By the way, uh, there's no such thing as deceleration. Don't just stop saying that word. There's positive acceleration or there's negative acceleration, okay? Deceleration is a bad word. It's like centrifugal, just bad word. And then we get to E, and in E, it looks like it's speeding up, then slowing down. So it looks like, in this case, the proper answer is C. Right? Who's got a question? Oh, and then I think I've answered it there. There's my official key. Uh, all right. Questions on this? I am went a few minutes over, but not too bad.
But, uh, stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Hold on. Stay there. Uh, yeah. Stay. Boom. Okay, now. Got it. Okay. I wanted to get an, an image of everybody that's here because I think it's kind of good to know who's coming to these things. I mean, I think it shows up in your grades, but... And I hate to give stamps, you know, uh, because it's helping and, you know, not everything has to be about stamps, okay? My wife keeps telling me, stop giving me stamps. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I shouldn't know anything about my stamp situation. All right, we're going to go then. Uh, stick around. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I was recording it. Um, I'll stick, I'll, I'll stop recording. We'll go off the air, and then you can ask questions at the end if you want. Anyway, actually, I'm not going to stop recording yet. You guys can go if you want. We're done, except for the overtime, if it wants to hang out for overtime. Oh, I know what you're waiting on. You're waiting on the nudity. Okay, it's not going to happen tonight, boys and girls. Nothing. No shirtless. Nope. Uh, that it may be next time. Not in the mood. All right. We got the fellas. The fellas are still here. Down to four, though. Okay, now it's just Chris. He might have left the scene. Finn, Finn may have a question. Shargo is the first one here, last one to leave. That's not a bad policy. Oh, Finn's asking a question. Sorry. When when you're doing a duo, a duet, how do you know which graph to do first? That's a good question. Um, good night, Chris. Uh, whatever you're given, you'll be given one and yes to do the other. If, if you're given the top graph, then you got to find the slope, right? If you're given X versus T, you got to find V equals T. If you're given V equals T, you got to do the area and find the. So you'll be given one or the other. But to go down, you take slope. To go up, you find the area. It's like an elevator. So on question 12, how do you know to do the step graph first? Okay, let's go back and look at question 12. That's, these are probably pretty good questions. Question 12, that's this guy. Well, um, ha ha. Because I, <laughs> I would have had to have done the antiderivative to go to the top graph. I would have had to have known calculus to go directly from the integral to the top graph. That would have been, we do graphical calculus. So you would have had to have done the integral in your head uh, and then and then gone up and done. And so what I'm saying is you could do, you could go straight to the top graph, but it's much, it makes much more sense. Um, and it's uh, much more, pure think th in thinking to first go to the first antiderivative or not, not even first to just represent what those equations are telling you first draw the representation i'm a visual guy like faraday right i mean i, I see in graphs i see and i used to not be crazy about gra i mean i didn't like graphs in college but now it's like wow i see the relationships so anyway so I want to see that relationship in the graph first, and then I can do the antiderivative because I can find the area. And that's really what you're doing when you're doing that antiderivative. Uh, and I, we haven't even talked about derivatives yet, but now I hear him saying antiderivative, but that is integrals are antiderivatives. You got, you're going, anytime you go up from the basement, this, the, the first graph is all, this first graph, I always consider the basement. Uh, this first graph, the low graph here. That's why I'm doing this order. The low graph is the foundation, kind of what everything's built on. And then for a duet, all you have is one floor above it. That's it. But then for a trio, like we're doing now, we have the foundation with, because foundations are flat, right? So we have the foundation. You can keep, okay, you can keep going, you keep you could have a, something to the fourth power and keep taking derivatives and get down to that foundation and know what the overall founding formula is. That's what, that's part of it. In loose sense, that's what derivatives are on Wall Street. 
is they're look they're they're, they're kind of watching derivatives. They're watching how it changes, how 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 the market sections are changing. That's called a derivative, and then they're forecasting based on longer terms, like second derivatives. Okay, so what's the overall then? That tells you what's going on a day to day basis. What's happening on a monthly basis? So you're doing second derivatives. So you're looking at bigger pictures. So with every derivative, you're looking at a bigger picture. Okay, uh, kind of what what runs the show. Duets is it's almost trivial, but I just wanted you to get used to doing it. But then uh, they get a little more, they get better with trios because now we're doing curves and those are called girl in the Jeep problems. So we'll get to that. It's much more complicated to go from a line to a curve. That's a big deal. It's, it's taxes your brain. Girl in the Jeep is tough. Girl in the Jeep problems are tough. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. Well, if it makes some sense, but it'll make more sense. The, fur the further, the longer you're in, uh, you know, physics, uh, Finn, you know, the, I say the more sense it makes, and then sometimes the less sense it makes, because you keep thinking bigger picture, bigger problems. Um, yeah, like this in the latest Nobel Prize in physics. So, as long as it makes a little more sense tonight, that's all you can hope for in physics is to get a little bit more sense each day. All right. I guess I'm going to stop recording and we are going to uh, call her good. See you guys. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry, guys, question. If the initial position of the graph in 12 was zero, gotcha. Uh, would we have to, would we have had to show the velocity at or zero to three, yes, because the velocity is still zero. So you would still show it. You, you got to pick up when the thing said to pick up. For some reason, whoever wrote this equation, well, I did, but just to try and see if you guys, but it was ever, that's the great thing about integrals is you can say, here's my start time, here's my finish time, you know, uh, in kinematics. So it's really convenient. It's brilliant uh, mathematical notation. But yeah, your velocity would still be zero. Uh, you would have gone off the graph on that top top graph. You would have gone off it. But anyway, okay. I guess we're gonna go. Shardo. Okay, thank you. I'll talk to you later. Stop the sharing. And uh, yeah, so um, hey, if you're if do me a favor if you just happen to watch this thing because it's all public right and you happen to watch it and it helped let me know because uh i'm gonna retire i'm about to retire in may and i i if i could help people on youtube and have a like an international class just kind of people that want to join in um anyway so if, if you happen to come across this one uh give me your thoughts in the comments uh you know, as long as they're not uh, disgusting. Okay. Talk to you later.